Are you tired of paying potentially hundreds of dollars for older video games? Me too. Wait, scratch that. I actually don't remember the last time I've paid anywhere near the quote-unquote market value for an older video game. In fact, most games in my collection have been purchased for basically next to nothing, and this was predominantly during the pandemic, which, as we know, has marked the highest period for video game prices across the board. So, in this video, I'm going to reveal my tips and tricks on how to get video games for cheap. It's no secret that video games generally sell for less on local classified sites than on something like eBay or I guess DK Oldies for whomever watching this buys from there. And I actually made a whole video explaining in depth why this is the case. But what I didn't go over in that video are the actual methods on how to get these cheap video games. So using Facebook Marketplace as an example, let's go over some key things to look out for. By default, most of these platforms will show you types of listings that it thinks you like on its home page, so to speak. This is the fastest way to access listings, so you want to make sure it's showing you the right type of content. If you're not seeing exclusively video game items, you're going to want to continuously click on video game related listings to tell the algorithm that that's all you want it to show you. Any listing from a different category takes up a precious spot that could have been a cheap video game listing instead. If you're using the search bar, it's best to use general or more casual types of keywords. For example, if you're looking for an NES, search original Nintendo. If you're looking for a GBASP, simply search Game Boy you're more likely to find cheap video games from people that don't know much about video games in general. Along that same thought process, you should be avoiding terms like CIB, loose. You actually also shouldn't even be searching for specific game titles. If someone creates a listing for just one game, it's likely they've done some sort of research. The best deals come from a single listing that contains several games for a combined price. Sellers that don't do their homework are also sellers that want a hassle-free experience. Nevertheless, if you are still set on searching for a specific game, I'd again recommend using general terms. Any listing titled Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Hyperstone Heist for the Sega Genesis isn't going to be cheap. But if there's a listing titled Ninja Turtles Sega Game, now that's got potential. Also, do yourself a favor and filter out all listings above $200. Most cheap video game listings will be between $0 to $100, and deals with a lot of games will generally be no more than $200. Anything over that is usually considered obscene to people that don't know video games can have value. And we'd be wasting our time trying to find deals from people that do know video games can have value. When scrolling through listings, it's easy to see that the majority of sellers are basing their prices off eBay. You'll probably even see listings from the same sellers over and over again. What I like to do is block sellers like these. Don't get me wrong, it's not because I have a problem with them or anything. That's reserved for the reporting button. It's just that blocking someone is the only way to prevent their listings from continuously popping up on your marketplace feed. When you block a local reseller that has dozens of listings and frequently posts new ones, that frees up a lot of space for Facebook to potentially show you a cheap video game listing instead. So as you can guess, my block list is pretty long, but due to my efforts, I only really see listings from new or more casual sellers. That doesn't quite put you in the clear though, since anyone can easily look up eBay prices thanks to pricecharting.com, and sometimes it's the uninformed sellers that can have even worse prices than the resellers. My only other tip for finding cheap listings on these types of platforms is to check them often. That's pretty much the only reason I still have a Facebook account. And I know for a fact that resellers in my area have several Chrome tabs open at any given time, which they continuously refresh, looking for new listings. If you don't believe that cheap video game listings do actually come up, check the sold listings section and you'll probably see what you missed out on. Hey, I never claimed you'd get all the deals. Okay, so you finally stumbled upon a cheap video game listing and you're ready to send a message, but don't get comfortable yet. This next part is what separates the boys 
from the men. Firstly, you just want to sound like an actual human being. I know, I know, I know, that sounds pretty basic, but you'd be surprised by the amount of people that don't have simple messaging skills. It turns out that sellers are more willing to sell to you if you're nice, but not just nice. Sellers want to make sure that they're actually able to sell their item. So it's important that you're clear and responsive. Facebook Marketplace especially is terrible when it comes to buyers wasting your time. You know what I'm talking about if you've ever sold items on there before. Even for really good deals, it's not uncommon for people to message first and realize they can't find a way to get there later. Side note, if you don't have your own car, you're at a big disadvantage with pretty much everything I'm saying in this video. It's not impossible though. One reseller in my area somehow gets people to drop their games off at his house. And it's not like he's offering eBay prices, so I don't know how he's so successful. Probably because he refreshes Facebook tabs all day. Secondly, you're gonna wanna buy everything in the listing. If there's a whole bunch of video games, but you're only interested in a couple and think the seller will piece them out for you, think again. While some may actually be okay with that, all it takes is one opposing buyer to come along willing to buy everything for your deal to fall through. Like I said earlier, sellers want a hassle-free experience. Would you partially sell to one buyer over another that's willing to buy everything? So if the price is cheap, you gotta take the crap games with the good games, or no games at all. Side note, if a seller individually lists prices for their games in the description, save yourself the time and move on. There's no deals to be had from these sellers, at least not the types of scores we're going for in this video. Okay, so you've found a deal, you've got the seller's attention, and now you're making their life easy by taking everything off their hands. That's all there is to it, right? Grab their address, grab the cash, and grab the keys to your car. Now. In my early days, this is what I'd do, and while it worked sometimes, if I were fast enough, I'd soon come to know extreme disappointment. The worst experience I recall was after driving across the city and reaching the seller's doorstep, I got a message telling me they were instead going to go with someone offering $200 more than the asking price. The thing that makes all of this so difficult and the reason why prices snowball out of control to begin with is because competition is ruthless, especially if your competition is resellers. Resellers can afford to offer more than your average video game collector because they're selling 100% of the items they purchase. So let's take a step back and talk about how you can prevent a situation like this from happening. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I did still end up getting the deal. I said something like, I have the cold hard cash right here in my hands, ready to pay you. That other guy, he could flop. He could be bluffing. He could just be saying things as people often do on Facebook Marketplace. If you go with that other guy and he doesn't show up, you're at zero dollars and I'm not coming back. And I can't believe it, but that worked. It just may have been too much of a hassle for the seller at that point or they were more than likely overwhelmed. Sellers don't exactly expect a ton of messages when they post old video games for sale. So with that story out of the way, how can we prevent competition from ruining our deals? E-transfers. Tell the seller you can e-transfer them a deposit, or the full amount, assuming it's not too much, if they're willing to hold the item for you. That type of offer right there tells the seller that you're not wasting their time and you're a serious buyer. But I know what you're thinking. What if it's a scam? Is it really okay to be e-transferring random people? As such, you're first gonna wanna check some things like the seller's ratings, the resolution of the photos. If it has a lot of compression, it might not be their photos. The layout of the games. If it looks like an eBay listing, but the price doesn't reflect that, again, it's probably not their photos. Is the description strange? Scammers will often say shipping only and will explicitly state that they're looking for an e-transfer. Don't e-transfer someone that's looking for an e-transfer. What else are they selling? Expensive looking patio furniture, professional tools, and other desirable items all at suspiciously low prices? If it's on Facebook, you could even check their personal profile to see if anything strange is going on there. I've e-transferred countless sellers and not once have I been scammed, but that's because I'm pretty good at sniffing them out. Scammers, if you're watching this video, you gotta step your game up. Also, I never really e-transfer more than $50. That way, if it is a scam, it's not like I lost hundreds. And for items that really pique my interest, I'll sometimes e-transfer even if everything doesn't check out. I weigh the risk versus reward. 
Over the years, I've gotten so many good deals from e-transferring that potentially losing $50 once in a while is very much worth it for me. Mind you, I've come across my fair share of faulty consoles and dirty games, so uh, make sure you also factor in that potential inconvenience before you e-transfer. But when I first started e-transferring sellers, I just assumed that if the seller promised they'd hold the item for me, that meant they would hold the item for me. How naive I was. While some sellers will stay true to their word, most sellers give in to the pressure of other buyers still sending them messages. So I'd end up either having to pay more than the initial e-transfer, or they'd send the money back and go with a higher offer from someone else. Evidently, e-transferring the seller to hold an item for you still doesn't eliminate the main problem, competition. The final step we need to take is persuading the seller to remove the listing or mark it as sold. This prevents any additional buyers from crawling their way into the seller's DMs after the fact. Let's say you're first to message the seller and you can convince them to take down the listing. You've just blocked any potential competition. This is especially key if you can't get to the seller's address right away. Every minute that the listing stays up, several new buyers could be entering the seller's DMs, fighting for their attention. To really seal the deal, I'll sometimes even offer more than the asking price right off the bat by saying something like, I could do $50 for everything if you'd be willing to hold it for me by marking the listing as sold. You gotta be kinda casual about it. Also, notice that I only offer $20 more than the asking price. Some buyers would offer like $100 for this, which is still a great deal if you look at the games. However, that's the wrong move. It's suspicious to offer $70 more on a $30 listing, but at $20 extra, that seems a bit more ordinary from the seller's perspective. Although honestly, that much could have seemed questionable. And by the way, I only use this tactic if the listing is available. If it's marked as pending, or if the seller tells me that someone else is ahead of me, I don't push it. There's no use getting into bidding wars. That's what eBay is for. Better let at least somebody get the deal. If you want to go ahead and be the guy that sabotages someone's deal because you were late to the party, I can't stop you, but I don't like you. If I'm a latecomer, what I do instead is ask if they have any other games that they just haven't posted yet. One good deal tends to lead to another, and another, and another, and another. And there's no harm in picking up the scraps, especially if the other buyer didn't think to ask. I'll actually also use this tactic in general by messaging people selling less desirable games just in case they have anything good. That's how I got my GameCube Mario Party games. The guy had only listed a PS2 bundle with a bunch of sports games nobody cares about. Okay, let's change up the pace a bit and talk about some unique ways of finding video games for cheap. To start, if you're part of any online groups dedicated to buying, selling, or trading items in your local community, you can create an ISO in search of post. Facebook is pretty active with these types of groups. There's several in my area with thousands of members, most of which are retired people browsing Facebook all day, which is the exact audience you want your post to reach. Old people don't know much about video games, Old people get rid of their junk on Facebook. It's a perfect match. Yes, that's probably not too dissimilar to how you lost your childhood copy of Pokemon Emerald to begin with, but now you can get it back without paying $200. Personally, when I make these types of posts, I take a picture of my setup to show that I'm a genuine video game collector, but most others I've seen are either stock images or a bunch of cash, which really smells of reseller, but people can do what they want. A more popular strategy resellers will use is the Switch Trade post, where you make a listing with a Switch or whatever new console is hot, and basically say that you're looking to trade it for older video games. When this strategy works, it's a home run. You can get full collections of older video games with just one console you got from Walmart the day before. When times are rough, people are hesitant to put down the cash. So trading old games they don't use instead sounds like a great deal to them. And since you can also make it a listing on Facebook Marketplace, it'll be shown to people that are into video games, so you'll get a lot of interest. The problem is that almost all this interest is people offering common games, crap games, or more than likely a mixture of both. Great for resellers, they sell Wii Sports at a premium. Not so great if you already have most common games like I do. I swear, it's like half the offers I receive include Pokemon games. Over the three or so years I've been using this tactic, I've only accepted three offers, and I've received hundreds of messages. Interestingly though, I only ever bought one Switch. Yeah, it turns out you can use this tactic even if you don't have a Switch to trade, and then you can just give them cash if their offer is good enough, which they can then just use to buy a Switch. 
So overall, the switch trade isn't a terrible tactic, but in retrospect, I've wasted a lot of time responding to bad offers. A strategy that I haven't seen many people use is to put up physical in search of posters on mailboxes or bulletin boards in your area. Yeah, get outside, do some walking, maybe play Pokemon Go or whatever. I only put up a dozen of these in my neighborhood and I got five responses, which is pretty good for such little ground covered. But more importantly, three of the five were actual good deals and I ended up going with two of them. It could be that people are less likely to waste your time and theirs when communicating via a personal phone number as opposed to something like Facebook Messenger. Also, one huge benefit is that my posters stayed up for almost a year before the weather finally got to them or someone put their poster right over top of mine. Thanks, Dog Walker Joe. On Facebook Marketplace and other online platforms, your posts become less visible as time goes on to the point where they basically become hidden in about a week. I can only imagine how much better this strategy would be if I extended my area of coverage or specifically targeted older neighborhoods. Man, that, that sounded pretty sinister. I'm not evil, guys. I'm just trying not to break the bank over old video games. Next, let's talk about more traditional ways of getting video games for cheap that have pretty much been around since the inception of video game collecting. Garage sales and thrift stores. I'm grouping these two together because they have a lot of similarities. You typically have to dedicate yourself to showing up often and showing up early. For garage sales, at or more than likely before the actual sale starts. And for thrift stores, it's whenever they put out new inventory. But I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I don't think these two methods are worth your time, at least not anymore. While you still can find amazing deals, the days of consistently cheap video games at garage sales and thrift stores are long gone. People know garage sales are synonymous with vintage treasure and thrift stores are starting to price up video games and sell online. Of course, the competition is also more fierce than ever. There's always someone willing to get up a little bit earlier than you or willing to check just one more store than you. My main problem is that you could go to 20 garage sales or thrift stores and walk away with nothing. Yeah, if you go to 100, then you'll probably get something good, but frankly, at, at that point, you deserve it. In fact, it's still a loss. Like really, it comes down to how much you value your time. I think responding to bad Facebook offers is a waste of time, so you won't catch me going to garage sales or thrift stores. Also, if resellers don't find deals on video games, they'll just buy other things to resell instead, so it's not a total waste for them. We see all these collectors hyping up garage sales and thrift stores, but honestly, do something better with your Saturday mornings. Okay, let's move into the area that I'm sure a lot of you currently buy video games from. Video game swap meets slash conventions, your local mom and pop used video game stores, and lastly, eBay. Swap meets and conventions are typically a fun time, even if you don't buy a whole lot, but big time collectors and YouTubers will make it out to be a gold mine of potential deals, especially if you're good at negotiating. And just like garage sales, this might have been partially true in the past, but I just don't see it at all nowadays. Ever since the pandemic, it feels like the mindset of most of these sellers has changed. Well, if I don't get the price I want for this obscure game that's less rare than the potential buyers for it, well, that's no big deal. The value can only keep going up. Like I was interested in buying a bunch of PS3 games from this one booth, but the seller wouldn't budge on any of them, not even Katamari Forever. And I waited till the very end of the swap meet, which is a tactic that the big time collectors and YouTubers recommend. The seller didn't seem to mind when I walked away. They'll just take all their stock to the next event a week later. Prices in general also seems to be higher than eBay for some reason. These sellers clearly haven't seen my video on eBay prices. One time, I saw someone inquire about a Japanese copy of Pokemon Black they were eyeing. This booth didn't have price tags on any of their games. The seller pulled out the copy of Pokemon Black with one hand, and with the other hand, they pulled up price charting on their phone. Then they told the buyer, it'll be like $40, which was rounded up by $5, and the buyer handed over the cash, and that was it. That would have been the uh, last convention I went to. Moving on to mom and pop used video game stores, prices will generally be less than eBay, but it really depends on your area. In order to get great deals from places like these, you need to keep an eye out for sales that could happen throughout the year. For example, my local store has a sale on Boxing Day. Uh, for all you Americans watching, that's like Black Friday, but on the day after Christmas. And there's some serious savings to be had. PS1, PS2, and PS3 are all 50% off. And that goes for anything Xbox as well. But to be fair, Xbox stuff is pretty cheap to begin with. 
Nintendo games aren't discounted that much, but usually still around 25% off, which considering the normal prices at this place are already lower than eBay, that's uh, not too bad. On the day of the sale, I show up right when the store opens and I have no problems getting dibs on anything I want. It also helps that the only way these sales are advertised is through word of mouth or a, a poster on the entrance like a, a day before. My local store isn't big enough to have any sort of online presence. As you can imagine though, the pickings aren't exactly great the day after Christmas, but it still works for me since I go after more niche games. So overall, not as much potential as something like Facebook Marketplace, but better than conventions or swap meets any day of the week. And my mom is making me say that you should support local businesses. Okay, we finally made it to eBay and I won't get into it too much since I made a whole video on the topic, but in general, there's no deals to be had, except for less desirable video games. Games that are niche enough to not be sought after by everyday gamers, but games that aren't niche enough to be sought after by hardcore collectors. Your Ridge Racers, Ace Combats, Katamaris. I just named three Namco franchises, huh? At first glance, the eBay prices for these games don't look any cheaper than what you'd find elsewhere, but we want to shift our focus to the best offer button. Combining the best offer button with a less desirable video game equates to the buyer just winning most of the time. Let me give an example. One day I was specifically looking for Ridge Racer 5 in very good condition. Anyone else? Just me? Okay. I found one listed for $11.99 and no additional shipping charge, but I was like, I kind of want to be at $8.99 for this. So using the best offer button, I submitted an offer of $8.99. But then right after I was like, crap, I should have submitted an offer lower than that because I want to meet at $8.99. Careless mistake. So as per normal negotiations, I received a counter offer of around $10.99. At that point, I was like, screw it. I'll just counter their counter offer with $8.99. And uh, as to be expected, the seller declined with no counter offer. Then two days later, I again submitted an offer of $8.99. No one was going to buy Ridge Racer 5 in the meantime. Would any of you have? No? Just me? Less desirable game. And lo and behold, the seller actually accepted my third offer of $8.99. Like I didn't think I was the only person in the world looking for Ridge Racer 5. When the package came in, I saw that they paid $3.19 for shipping, which uh, you'd understand what that means if you've seen my eBay video. But not just that. I later noticed that this was a promoted listing, which means eBay takes an even bigger cut of that sale. That's something I didn't know existed when I made my eBay video. So as you can see, the seller didn't have much confidence in this game. They were probably satisfied with netting like $2, assuming they bought it for three. These are resellers we're talking about. But overall, even though we like to crap on eBay for high prices, just know it's a very different landscape when the buyer has the high ground. Well, that's pretty much everything I know about getting video games for cheap, summarized into a single video, of course. If there's any key points or strategies I missed out on, add them to the comments section for everyone's benefit. From the methods I've covered, I'd say searching through local classified sites like Facebook Marketplace is the best. The only issue is that despite my tips, Stumbling upon a deal at the right time still has a good amount of luck involved, unless you obsessively browse listings all day, which I don't think is a good use of anyone's time. But what if, now I've been saving this till the very end of the video, what if there was a way to see every new listing in your area without needing to open a site at all? What if you were always first to message the seller, beating your competition every single time? These are the questions I sought to answer when I created the Android app called AdAlerts. This app repeatedly scans Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Kijiji, even eBay, and it notifies you when a new listing appears related to what you're searching for. This uh, isn't an advertisement, by the way. I make no money off of it at all. Heck, I've only made a Canadian version so far, which rules out most of you watching this. The reason I bring it up is just to show that there's always going to be ways to work around the high prices that older video games have become notorious for. I, like many of you watching this, was really fed up with the current state of video game collecting. So I took that anger and did something about it. I'm not a professional app developer and my app isn't free of bugs, but for me, it gets the job done. I owe it for scoring me a decent chunk of the games in my collection. But even with the app, 
I wouldn't have been able to seal the deal on these games had it not been for the tips and tricks that I've shared throughout this video. So app or no app, if you're struggling with high game prices, I'd recommend stepping outside of your comfort zone and giving some of these strategies a try. Finally, just remember not to share this video because the more of you that know these tips and tricks, the more competition there is for everyone. Why do I sound sinister again?